60 Minutes Overtime. The Last Mafioso is the story of Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano and his life and times in the Cosa Nostra, the mob. In his autobiography just published, Fratiano tells of his 30 savage, brutal, treacherous years in the secret society known as the Mafia and of his last three years in the witness protection program as one of the most valued of government witnesses against the mob. Fratiano was accepted for Mafia membership back in the 40s, he says, after he showed that he could bust heads with the best of them. He graduated to robbery and extortion, to pornography and loan sharking, and, of course, to murder. Jimmy, who was the first person you killed? Mm, Frankie Nicoli. Where'd you kill him? In my house. How'd you kill him? We strangled him. In your own living room? Right. And then he dirtied your living room? A little blood. Yeah, a little blood and a little uh, discharge. Right. <laughs> How'd you know that? <laughs> urine. urine. A little urine, yeah. yeah. You smile when you think back about it. Well, what are you going to do? After you shoved a gun up against Tony Brancato's head, you were apparently proud of yourself because you say that you said, most guys just ain't got the stomach for it. They're squeamish. I can't figure them out. You remember killing Brancato? Yes. You take a look at this picture. Any, any emotion on seeing it? There's the two of them. No. Just a day's work. Had to do it. I took a guy out of Vegas one time and killed him. Just took him out of the desert inn. You know, there's different, different ways, different methods. You were a good kid. I just had the talent to, to do things like that. I never made any mistakes. Matter of some pride. No, I just... Uh, some people are a little better than others. But I think it would bother me if I killed an innocent person. What do you mean by an innocent person? Well, you're an innocent person. I'm glad to hear you <laughs> You don't have designs. Well, I mean, somebody innocent, you know, that uh, is not involved in criminal activities. Or... One gets the impression that mobsters are really animals. Well, they're not animals. Well, Some are, probably. Th Jimmy, they're brutal. They're vulgar. Yes, they are. They're uncaring. They're animals. Well, I'd say they're brutal. Uh, I don't say they're vulgar, all of them. I don't think I'm vulgar. <laughs> well, you're you're very benign, and, and you're smiling now. And, and well, I... But you yeah. killed five men. Yeah. You garroted one man in your living room. Uh, I'd say I'm brutal, yeah. I, I admit that. With us that evening was Ovid Damaris. Damaris has been writing about organized crime for years. He is also the author of Jimmy's story. But you cannot judge Jimmy in terms of uh, Harvard graduates or people in the coal mines. Or he, this was his world, the world he lived in. It's like the Godfather world. It's the world, right? he, it's the world he chose. It's, well, chose or not, I mean, whatever it is. If you live in a mining town, you may, you may cho choose to be, uh, to be a miner. But if you live in the ghetto, Italian ghetto of Cleveland, and all your friends are hoods, you have a chance you're going to grow up that way. Jimmy fought his way through the ghetto streets of Cleveland, where a policeman first labeled him a weasel. He served seven years for armed robbery, the first of almost 20 years he would spend in prison. Shortly after his first release, he moved to California, and in a ceremony marked by gun and sword, he became a made member of the Mafia. There's a gun and a sword crossing one another. Mm -hmm. Uh, the boss says something in Italian. We all hold hands. Manatakat, that means you're tying each other's hands. They prick your finger with a sword or with a pin to draw blood. And uh, you go around and meet everybody and you kiss them on the cheek. Now you're a made member. What are the privileges, what are the responsibilities of a made member of the Cosa Nostra? Well... Most people get made because they want respect. Respect from whom? Well, respect when you go to another town, they send you to the boss, and they take you around, they take care of your hotel, and you meet a nice class of people. You meet a nice class of people? 
You meet some other mobsters. Well, you also meet nice people. I met uh, George Raft. I met a lot of uh, years ago, Milton Berle, of Ben Blue. I know many a times I went to Vegas where nobody could get a seat. I'd get a front seat because I was uh, Jimmy Fratiano. Because he was Jimmy Fratiano, he was also among the most wanted of racketeers. Law enforcement officials alternately threatened to throw the book at him or tried to turn him as an informant. Finally, in 1977, they succeeded. With a murder rap hanging over his head, Fratiano became the highest-ranking member of the mob to tell all since Joe Valacci. According to organized crime strike force attorneys and FBI agents, Fratiano's knowledge and testimony have been instrumental in convicting high-ranking mobsters in both New York and California. But there are others Fratiano has fingered, not mobsters. Fratiano says Sinatra wanted to meet him because Sinatra knew that Fratiano called the shots in California and because he wanted a favor from Jimmy. Fratiano says Jilly Rizzo, Sinatra's good friend, told him Sinatra wanted something done about his former bodyguard, Banjo Salamtano. Jilly Rizzo told me that Frank wanted uh, the legs broke of uh, some guy that was uh, writing a story about him in the paper or in the book. And why would Sinatra want Salamitano's legs because, broken, uh, allegedly? Your... Jilly told me that he put something in a book or was going to write a book or something like that. Did you ever break his legs? No, he couldn't find it. When we contacted Rizzo, he would neither confirm nor deny that report. Sinatra and his representatives never responded to our inquiries. Fratiano asserts what has long been suspected but rarely talked about by a mafia insider that the Teamsters Union has close ties to the mob. Did the mob control Hoffa? He sure did. They put him in there. Then he moved on to current Teamster president, Frank Fitzsimmons, and his relationship with the mob. If they want a favor, they get it. They don't actually... Uh, he does what he wants to do. But uh, if they want something, they get it from him. And if he doesn't give it to them, then what happens? Well, he knows better, Mike. He'll give it to them. Well, what's, what's the clout they have? What can they do if he doesn't deliver? Well, what'd they do to Hoffa because he tried to run? They told him not to. They killed him. It goes back, way back in the early 30s, when it was started. Uh, who who uh, got Hoffa in there as president? Joe Glimko got all the votes. Made guy, right? Tony Pro, New York, East. Tony Provenzano. Right. Uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, Chicago, uh, all the bosses, they got key men. And, says Fratiano, even today, high-ranking Teamster officials like Roy Williams have mafia contacts in key cities. Roy Williams, it's Kansas City, uh, Nick Savillo, Tony Giordano in St. Louis, and Joey Ayupa, the boss of Chicago. They go to Williams if they need a favor. Uh, in the... Detroit, it's... Uh, they go direct to Fitzsimmons. Who runs the Teamster organization in Cleveland? Mm, Jackie Presser. Who controls him? Uh, the boss of the Cleveland family. Who's that? James Licavoli. Jackie Presser, who holds a post on the Reagan transition team, is said to be heir apparent to Frank Fitzsimmons as head of the Teamsters. Incidentally, much of what Fratiano says about the Teamsters has been alleged or confirmed in federal wiretaps, documents, and court records. Gangster Mickey Cohen was among the nice class of people Jimmy Fratiano ran into in the late 40s. Through Mickey Cohen, Fratiano found himself at a Bel Air home where Cohen and his cronies were raising money for arms and ammunition for Palestine. Also present, Menachem Begin, who was then head of the Irgun. Mickey introduced him to me as the head of the Irgun. He had a black band around his left arm. Yeah. And at that time, Mickey told me that uh, he was on a lamb, that he was wanted for some killings or something. Mickey told me he was a lampster. What was Mickey Cohen's uh, part well, in all that? The, the Haganah wanted to handle the, the money. And the Orgoon wanted to handle it. So Mickey says, wait a minute, we're here for one thing, to get money for Jerusalem. Why don't we let the rabbi handle it? That's Mickey's man, okay? Mickey's man. That's right. Mickey's rabbi. Mickey's rabbi. Yeah. So the rabbi handled it. So And all that, I think they raised... Uh, Three quarters of a million. I heard it was a million. What happened to the three quarters of a million or a million dollars? Mickey got it from the rabbi. They never sent no ammunition. 
he showed, I told him, I says, let's cut up this money. Well, he says, Jimmy, this is for the Jews. I said, what are you kidding? At that time, uh, uh, we went to the party. He donated 25. He kicked me to donate some money. I said, I ain't giving a quarter. I ain't got no money. So I donated 15. 15,000? 15,000. He had this uh, woman that used to be head of the city editor for the Herald. And anything Mickey would tell her, she would write. So one day, Mickey shows me, he says, look at the ship sunk with the arm. <laughs> he had that put in there to show people that they, they had the arms, they were going to Jerusalem, and the ship sunk. If it is possible for mafiosi to have any real friends, Chicago mobster John Rosselli was Jimmy Fratiano's friend. Rosselli originally proposed Jimmy for membership in the mob. There is little loyalty in the mafia. There is treachery. Their law is the survival of the fittest. Fratiano's best friend, John Rosselli, was murdered by the mob. Let me show you a picture of John Rosselli. Here he is, in a barrel. Any emotion about that, uh, Jimmy? Well, what could I tell you? Uh, I didn't feel too good when I knew when they killed him. But what could he, what can you do about it? Did the mob actually have a contract with the CIA to assassinate Fidel Castro? Johnny Roselli did, yeah. Johnny Roselli. Yeah. Your friend, the fellow who proposed you for the mob, had a contract to do what, for whom, under what circumstances, with whom? Well, to kill Castro for the CIA. Tell me what you know. Well, uh, all I know that Johnny told me that they were going to kill Castro for the government. And uh, he said, geez, if we do this, we'll get all the favors we want. Because of the explosive nature of his information, Jimmy Fratiano may be the most wanted man in America, according to U.S. government marshals charged with keeping Fratiano alive these last three years in their witness protection program. So they are taking no chances even with 60 Minutes. They arranged for us to meet at Washington's National Airport and took us for a ride through the Virginia countryside before arriving at a government safe house on the Potomac River. They asked that we disguise Fratiano, reducing the chances he'll be recognized when he leaves protective custody. Most of all, they, and Jimmy, fear mob retaliation. They put a contract out on your life. That's right. You got scared, and the FBI said, Jimmy, you better get yourself into this program. Well, no, I made my own mind up, Mike. I, they didn't... Uh forced me to get into it. I had no choice. At the uh, recent trial of Funzi Thierry in New York, mobster Thierry, you told the court this. You said you have two choices. You tell the truth and die, or you lie and stay alive. That's right. Now, this is as far as the mob is concerned, but how, how, how do we know that you're telling the truth now? Well, you've got to take my word for it. <laughs> But you're the fellow who just said, you tell the truth and die, you lie and stay alive. I don't lie now. Uh, since I turned uh, with the government, everything I told them is the truth. When did you suddenly get religion and we know that you tell the truth? Well, what benefit would I get in lying? Mm. You'd come on television and you'd tell some lies, which are uh, entertaining. Mm, and I, that, that, that uh, hypes the sale of your book. I wouldn't do that, Mike. There's a word that's important here, immunity very important in this case, where he can say anything he wants to. He can say he murdered 50 people if he wants to, yeah. and he's got immunity. Providing I tell the truth. But and, if you're caught in a lie, that's it. They can try me on everything. Before, I had to lie to stay alive. Now, I have to tell the truth. I take it that most of you and your brothers in the uh, Cosa Nostra were born and remain Roman Catholics, right? I'd say most of them, yes. How do you, how do they square a life of crime, dedicated to crime, with that religious affiliation? Well, they're hypocrites like I am. Don't go to church. Don't confess your sins. Although we're still Roman Catholics. I get the impression that, that you haven't gotten a lot out of your life. Am I wrong? You're right. Got any money? No. Got any reputation? Bad. Got the admiration of anybody? No. 
Where do you go from here, Jimmy? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs>